Michelle. Daniel. O.T. Rose. Rose. And today we're going to be talking about scrolling, a piece that Michelle had on Anchor about scrolls, what it meant in the past that they would open scrolls, the relationship of people to the scrolls, contrasted with how we talk about on Facebook and social media scrolling and the difference between those um, those things. Yeah, like I think it's interesting because the act, the action itself basically just scrolling, scrolling through, you know, <laughs> right, going kind of through. mindlessly through, not necessarily mindlessly, but you know, just scrolling through the the landing feed, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just it got me thinking about you know what well, what you know what other associations are there with scroll right. and scrolling, and it just made me think that's fascinating because scroll for me always has the association with a divine text. Right. Or some sort of historic account, but really something that's very, um, you know, a special thing that that's going to be try to pass be, pass something down to mm. future generations. And with scrolling, um, I mean, I guess I was thinking about myself and trying to be a little bit critical of the activity when I personally do it. Now, some people might be able to do scrolling and some profoundly productive manner <laughs> but I know for myself if I find myself in that sort of just mindless scrolling um, maybe it's just like chewing gum though you just kind of but it's, sure. it, it's it's not it's not particularly productive right now maybe if you just need some time to like not think very much then it mm. can satisfy that but the, the the hard part with the scrolling on social media is that it's endless right literally endless you know you could just you could literally just Sit forever. there and scroll for three days straight, <laughs> which is which is just kind of wild. I mean, there's no like really boundaries to the veg time, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think I think that there can be some things that could be productive about it. You could stumble upon some interesting things, mm. but it also could inundate you. You know, the sure. thing is with a scroll, and I'll I'll pass it off to you. But with a scroll, there was some sort of defined parameters. You know, sure. I mean, theoretically, a scroll could roll out for like one mile or something right. like that. But for the, you know, that there was some like ending point and a starting point. Right. Um, but we don't have that with social media. Well, it's interesting. I mean, a scroll uh, that would be before the printing press, so it was especially limited. Uh, you would open it up, and it would be rather right, be a limited amount of them. Someone would have to do it by hand. So mm -hmm. it is interesting the idea that, arguably. The, the form of the transmission of the written word that is most limited is what would come to describe the this infinite um, ingestion of mm -hmm. um, information and, and data and social media. It's also funny because you say a scroll, like um, as you alluded to, is religious. It's pointing to yeah, an infinite exactly. reality. Exactly. But on social, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, but on social media, the gap has been closed where the scroll is the infinite thing. Hmm. As opposed hmm. to pointing to something infinite, it itself has become... Um, infinite, which kind of suggests that the <laughs> gap between the finite and the infinite is closed, mm -hmm, where, mm -hmm. you know, you exist in a world that if religious religion is waning, it's trying to make the finite the infinite, as opposed to having the finite point to the infinite. Um, but we may not, uh, the infinite, the finite might not, might not be up for that if we uh, accept all of the various mental health um, issues that people are facing, or all the neurosis that social media is apparently giving rise to. It's interesting to think that scrolling is contributing to uh, mental health issues, whereas scrolls, you know, pointing to the, the infinite, that might have been a better way to um, help people find their place in the world, find belonging and the, the various benefits of religion. So it's interesting to think about the scrolling as a closing of the gap between the finite and the infinite. Mm. And I think that's that's such a great point, Daniel. I, I remember us talking one time, one evening, and... and we're talking about different things and I remember you kind of just gesticulating towards the room and sort of talking about how you know there's really like an infinity right here you know sure. right within a room if you have to notice every single detail right and know every single you know there's just there's actually an infinity right before us yes so I guess what I mean to say is this is interesting right because like you said the gap closes there with the scroll the yes. scrolling being the scroll essentially yes. Yes. um and yet and yet it's interesting because actually in the fabric of our, like in our phenomenology, really, yes, we have a, there's where the gap meet is closed in a sense with our actual physical experience of the world around us. Right. But what's interesting is the screen actually hyper focalizes us to this actually only one surface. Yes. Only one 
only one viewpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Which then is the sort of the, you get in touch with that, that infinite, right? You're literally touching, yeah. touching it. And so scrolling through it, but actually not touching it. Cause you know, you see a picture of a cactus, you see a picture, yeah, sure, of it. you're not actually sure. touching any of those things you're seeing, right, but right. you, you know, you touch images. Right. So, so I think that's interesting because I guess what I mean to say is that perhaps in a way that, you know, what the religious text in scrolls were doing was to say was a reminder of the infinite that's in what is around us in a sense that the things that you know are physically able to be held etc um and unfurled like a plant unfurling because that's another thing i mentioned in the talk is how a scroll would you know you would unroll it you know right unroll it up again kind of like the circadian rhythms of a flower right hmm. like opens up in the morning right. and it closes in the evening you know hmm. depending on what flower it is but it does that Hmm. And so there's something about the fact that that would mimic and re and reveal to us that, you know, the things in our in our actual phenomenological experience point us to the infinite. Hmm. Hmm. And and yet in the in the social media realm, it's it's almost like trying to do that, but it's so flattened. It's, oh, it's almost too hyper compressed. Yeah, well, it's the word infinity is always interesting, right? Because you have like um, lower you have finite finitude, you have infinite, like lowercase i infinite, which would be like the amount of stimuli that's in this room. It's mm -hmm. practically infinite because you couldn't take in and really examine every detail of it. But technically, it's still finite as well. It's practically mm -hmm. infinite, but mm -hmm. it's technically finite. Like technically, the universe within its boundaries is finite even though it's infinite relative to us it may ultimately be infinite if it's always expanding but it's kind of like excuse me it's still kind of technically finite but then you have the idea of kind of the capital i infinite which is which is pointing to higher dimensions higher realms um higher higher um higher possible realities and what's interesting is that there's something to be said about if you take seriously um, the infinite, even finite infinity, lowercase i infinite, that points to uppercase i infinity. So one of the things that can be really problematic is, one, if you get so focalized on the finite, um, because it's almost like with scrolling, it's infinite, but you also know in the back of your mind that it's arbitrary. So it's almost, mm -hmm. it's like an arbitrary infinity, mm. which is almost worse than finitude. Mm -hmm. uh, because like mm -hmm. finitude, it's like, yeah, this chair here is limited, but there's actually at least a thing here to sort of examine, to like, be part or of sit in. or you sit know, in or something. but it's like with the scrolling it's like an arbitrary infinity that precisely because it's infinite it can pull you in to treat mm -hmm. to treat reality surface to treat it you could almost ask this question are you better off with a two-dimensional infinity or with a 3d object what's better mm -hmm. you know the problem with an infinite two-dimensional screen is you'd come to be toward reality as two-dimensional to not take in its fullness mm -hmm. you would be better off in some respects to be to be more oriented toward a three-dimensional object that was limited <laughs> precisely because it would be fuller mm -hmm. so you know when you mm -hmm. talk about infinity you're getting into kind of mathematics yeah. and you have different dimensions and different planes so in a sense like the screen that has this arbitrary infinity and its two-dimensionalness is notably bad because then it, it's almost like you can make a difference between um, infinity and endless you know, uh, like where infinity, if we want to keep that with more of a platonic connotation, like a higher sort of realm, what you could say is that um, the, the social media is endless. It's a finite, but it's a two-dimensional finite endlessness <laughs> that distracts you from 3D finitude, mm -hmm. of which if you took 3D finitude seriously, you would even see kind of a finite infinity that yes. would then make you more attuned to a capital I infinity or a new horizon possibility but all of that mm -hmm. second half of that is completely lost when you just come to the um to this kind of endless two-dimensional reality um so you always have those but you know these differences between endless infinite capital you know I. capital I. I infinite and you can also talk about infinite relative to the y-axis infinite relative to the x-axis infinite mm -hmm. relative to one dimension two dimension three dimension and so on and so forth but, you know, the idea that in the past the scroll would kind of point to an infinity of infinities, per se, right? This kind of mm -hmm. infinite, 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 where now all we have is endless. Which then, if we allude back to previous conversations where heaven is um, eternal, whereas hell is endless, timelessness, mm -hmm. this is notably bad. Because, right. uh, because what the scrolling then does is make our relation to time in general 
be something of um, negative as opposed to full. Yes, yes, yes. There are so much good, so many, so many good things there, Daniel. I like even just to think about that, that the 2D, 3D. What's so fascinating about that is that, you know, I wonder, they just made me think of a lot of things. The first thing is that when I heard 2D, it made me think of like binary yeah, too. Absolutely. And I wonder if there is some strange, because we're using the medium of the phone, thinking about like McLuhan, like the fact that we use it and it is a super, it is a surface visual or something. Right. You notice it, there's something superficial about it. Um, that doesn't mean that like, all content is necessarily superficial that is consumed in it through it but the actual structure of it is a surface right mm. there's really nothing behind it you know flip it over there's nothing there and so it i wonder too if that two dimension does really somehow make our thinking very oh yeah two dimensional and therefore binary basically just like absolutely you know x y you know right like it's training you on a bunch of fronts. You say, oh, they have a thousand likes. This person has 10 likes. Therefore, this one's better than the other. You know, you yeah, have these certain, of, yeah. like, in, out. Are they in the in crowd? Are they in the out crowd? Oh, is this a channel I follow? Is it not? Lots of binary thinking is going on there. You're making lots of decisions mm -hmm. when you're on the screen to like, dislike. You know, lots mm -hmm. of binary mm -hmm. It is absolutely habituating you toward binary decisions, not, say, dynamic decisions or complex yeah. decisions such as you could associate with the stock market or yes. personal relationships. I mean, I think the screen, especially social media, you are, it is bad because it's an endless training of binary thinking. And mm -hmm. if it's the case that the most pressing problems in life or the biggest decisions require dynamic thinking, a more complicated cause and effect, dynamic cause and effect, well, then you're being habituated to fail at life, basically, <laughs> or to not do a very good job mm -hmm. to, uh, to 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 find yourself um, bringing the wrong mental model to to reality. Yeah, and the three D made me think like how you know with the chair, there there is something strangely more, in a sense, than more like you said, fuller about yes. a chair, just even a chair. Yes. Compared to like um, scrolling through social media yeah. or the the surface, the two D, and if we're gonna get to like some, you know infinity of infinities a, 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 like a capital i infinity right that would almost require in a, a, a mm, experience with the 3d yes right that's right and it almost trinitarian type of sure type of concept um so it 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 is very interesting because that flattening has a lot of other implications you know and i you know again everyone has probably found themselves in a position of scrolling um i think i think that something that is interesting to me about it too is that sometimes it is done as if to look for something yeah yeah yeah. and yet if you found it that would kind of defeat the purpose because like your whole purpose is kind of just to keep scrolling mm -hmm. it's this weird sort of paradoxical you know desire and yet if you actually met it you wouldn't be able to keep scrolling which is the thing you want to do as well it, so yes. it's like are you really looking for anything or are you really just scrolling are you not looking for something but yet sometimes people I mean, I think that scrolling can happen, though, sometimes for people is almost like a way to cope with like even like loneliness, for example, or or yes, anxiety, you know, well, which is, it's weird. It's almost like I, I was just thinking, like, does that why, why would one think that scrolling would like somehow satisfy like it's not like something's going to pop up and be like, I don't it's just it's just very strange. It's like, how do you what what do you think you're going to find exactly in there that's like going to suddenly make you feel all better <laughs> well i think scrolling can just happen and you don't it's like changing the channel on the tv like people do you don't know what you're looking for you're just but you're also don't want to stop looking for something because what if you miss something you have mm -hmm, this kind mm -hmm. of double action you don't exactly. know what you have to That's see it to know what you're looking for that even gets back to i guess plato and some of the dilemmas of how or augustine i guess in the confessions this kind of question of how do you how do you um how do you know what you're looking for exactly you, That's you what know I mean to get at. It's like, like it's kind of a weird thing exactly. it's like if you've if you know what you're looking for, then don't you have it? You know, yeah. haven't you seen it? Mm -hmm. So it's this weird, mm -hmm. funny thing that Augustine explores in, I guess, book 11. And uh, so you have this thing with scrolling where, you, where you're kind of going through. I think I have this image, too, of it's almost like it's almost like you have a stone that's trying to skip across the water as opposed to go deep. And the question is, mm -hmm. you're looking, it's like, oh, I skipped one. Oh, I skipped two. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I managed to find enough stimuli to want to scroll to the next. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have this image of a stone that keeps going. And, like, why does it keep going? You know eventually it's going 
going to stop, mm-hmm. but it's almost like how far can you go? There's a certain mindlessness. Yeah. There's almost a there's almost I want to say play, a kind of just like yeah. why not spirit to yeah. it? Why not go to the next one? Why not head on to the next one? Uh right. that I think is kind of behind it to some right. respect. Um the other thing I think that's interesting is the idea when you talk about scrolls. Uh, there's this idea that, you know, often if we, we go back to the Torah, the Old Testament, you're reading the will of God. This is what God said. These are the commands that we need to God. So the, so the content is ultimately kind of like div- the divine. It's a way yeah. of kind of communicating with the divine. Whereas with scrolling, it's people's lives that are making the scroll. And, you, and then you begin thinking about your life of, oh, this is a moment that should be captured in the scrolling. This, oh, I should take a picture because this would make great scrolling content or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that. Um, whereas with scrolls, it was not turning your life into content. It was guidance on how to live the right life. Yeah, like yeah. so like the scrolls it's like this is how you live the good life with scrolling your life your your life is the content but of course this is very problematic because then you it's a true it's a circular reasoning because a good life then becomes one that's good on scrolling uh which then you one has to ask themselves um is it really the case that a good life is one that makes good scrolling material mm-hmm. uh and because if not we may want to think again uh yeah. the, the 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 source um, of our scrolling, especially if it's making us two-dimensional, right? I mean, people people do, though. They they think about, oh, this is an Instagram moment. They, it's like those little cats that, like, like people will say, oh, that's his pr- a sunset, and they'll say, that's as pretty as a picture, or they'll say, oh, that should be in a movie. Like, it felt like a movie, these kind of phrases. Now, the new lexicon that people use is like, oh, hash, you know, hashtag, or oh, that should be a tweet. Oh, tweet that, or Instagram that, which really is kind of suggesting that we're living our lives looking for parts of our lives that could be put into consumable terms yes which yes. then means we're thinking of our lives in terms of two dimensions which means we're probably closer to an endless two-dimensional scrolling <laughs> in our very orientation to life than a three-dimensional chair uh which which could have some unintended consequences right right and i think i think to have that awareness can help potential risks of scrolling right then you know perhaps you can engage with it occasionally like as 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 like some sort of like chewing gum like i was saying like or just I don't know, staring out into the ether or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just saying that I think that, you know, it's inevitable probably that some someone might still engage in some sort of scrolling. Um, but I think at least in being aware of some of these concepts could maybe help one, I don't know, f- like leave that process f- feeling um, like less entrapped by it, I guess is what I want to say. Because I think... If not, then it can become even like a insatiable habit or something like well, that. Well, it gets tied <laughs> And to I guess it. it's like up to the person to decide if that's good or bad, but but yeah. Well, it gets tied to the problem of extrinsic mer- motivation versus intrinsic motivation, where you yeah. have a lot of people that are extrinsically motivated because that's what school and society wants. You know, Daniel Pink, lots of people talk, Victor Frankl, et cetera, et cetera. Extrinsic, uh, extrinsic. extrinsic motivation, where you're motivated by something yeah. external of yourself as opposed to an internal drive. Yeah. Well, if you're motivated externally, then if you have nothing to do, you're, 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 you, the phone is great because you can quickly <laughs> yeah. look for something. And then oh Sarah I forgot about Sarah there she is like, I wonder how she's doing you send a message like scrolling I think it's tied to extrinsic motivation because it can always be a source of finding something new to motivate you or to interest you or yeah. you know the same with that can be seen with um, the TV changing channels you know yeah. we, we really think a lot of millennials think we're a lot better than those TV watching people who'd sit in front of the couch forever and watch television, you know, our parents or whatever, but, you know, we're here on our cell phones forever. Are we really that much better? We've we figured out a way to take the TV outdoors, basically. Um, and, and so, you know, the intrinsically motivated person, I think there's a natural way that that balances just yeah. kind of looking for things because also you're looking for things that are going to help you with what you're intrinsically motivated to do. Yes. And then also the intrinsic, related, the intr- intrinsic motivation naturally makes you not want to waste time. Because you want to have time to do the thing that you want to do. Um, so that, that helps. I think the other thing that's interesting is when I hear scrolling, I think about strolling and how it used to be that people would take strolls, you know, to pass the time or they yes. would go and take a walk. And the thing about a stroll is if you're doing it by yourself, 
whether it be Heidegger in the woods or C.S. Lewis or something, um, your imagination is at play. You're thinking. There are images in your head. Like you go on a stroll kind of to daydream. The thing that can be very problematic about scrolling is you're kind of doing the same, passing the time, but you're making the phone do your internal work for you as opposed to going on a stroll to activate your own internal imagination. So that's where I think can be really bad is the scrolling replaces the strolling, if you will. And so now, so now you're not even training those faculties of daydreaming where creativity and new ideas come from. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. I like that very much. Yeah, I was, I mean, I was thinking too, just thinking of these words we use with, with our, with phones and with social media scrolling. I was thinking about like, I was just noticing how, you know, that phones typically, if it's, if it's a, a smartphone, which a lot of people use, sure. which is a funny term too, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but it basically like they, they reflect, right? Yeah. Like if, if they're, if, um, they they can basically reflect um if if it's in like the off position you know you can kind of like look into it yeah, and then yeah, also yeah. the fact that they have a camera so if you want yeah. to like use the camera feature feature and literally look at your face you yeah. know yeah, yeah. take a selfie or you know see things or see yourself whatever but the point of that is that the, it's interesting because like you're saying the scrolling does the does the mental work for you the internal work for you right that would have maybe typically been been done through strolling yes. right and I was thinking about how interesting that this little device does, it does the reflecting for you, right? Like it does, it actually reflects, it Mm. it actually has a reflection, Mm -hmm. almost like a pool of water would in a way, right? Mm -hmm. It's a similar kind of, similar concept. And, and yet like the phone is 2D, there's not, there's, there's no depth, there's no like, the lake would have some depth to it at least, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, basically, smartphone, it's marketing. If you own this phone, you're smart. And there's a lot of the uh, talk, this idea that one day we're just going to plug up to the Internet, transhumanism, singularity. So it's kind of stupid to work too much on (laughs) Yeah, you know, um, imagine that. You know, there's kind of this idea that it's almost dumb to train your brain and to read a lot because one day you're just going to be able to plug up to something. So why are you doing all this work? And there is a sense that, like, why do this internal work? Because you have a phone. You could look up any fact in the world at any time. What's the point of memorizing it all? (laughs) Now, of course, this (laughs) falls... I gave David math, like, his math problems. Yeah. like... I did ask Alexa for three of these. I was like, oh, no. I was like, well, thank you for telling me. Yeah, and right. I can, he's like, because these ones just boggle my mind. Yeah, yeah, boggle my mind. He's like, great. Excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's like, so why wouldn't you use the phone if you have it? There's this kind of sense that it's irrational not to use it. Now, of course, this plays right into the fallacy of um, instrumental rationality, things that Adorno works, wor- worries about, Hume, et cetera, so forth, because the most important thinking in life is not ones that can be boiled down to facts you can look up on Google. It requires active thinking. But, you know, there is this idea that the phone is going to give you the truth. You know, you right, look up the right, truth, exactly. you will get the truth. And so you will know yourself. Like and, like, you, you don't have to reflect. We'll just reflect for you. Yeah, and you're going to know the truth on if you're um, popular. You're going to know the truth on if people like your work because you'll be able to look on social media and find you'll out. Numbers, you know, you'll mirror, get... mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? It's black. Not me. <laughs> 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 nope, it's Sarah down the street. She's got a thousand followers. Is there, like, is Black Mirror playing off of yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Let me tell you. That, okay. That's brilliant. Even... Um, yes, it's a play on the Black Mirror of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is, is interesting because then it's like um, there's a – it's not it's like the illumination is in the is like it illuminates not you illuminate you know yes um and it's it's like it's it's a it's a you know like if we're thinking black mirror well it's like it's reflective but it's in darkness yes so it's just interesting i mean that that i think i think if one is aware of these things they can hopefully have a better orientation toward that technology Mm -hmm. and not become you know just completely dictated by it well i mean it's all tied to the paradox of convenience the more convenient something is the more difficult it is to not think of it as attached to you or part of you like i think about the physical fact to to close like the physical fact of a scroll like you'd have to carry it like (laughs) you couldn't just like in passing open and be like hey let me glance at this real quick like it was an event (laughs) it was to open it like two people had to carry a lot of the scrolls and and opening it was delicate and making it it was like a huge deal you probably have to wear some cool robe and a hat you would definitely wear a cool (laughs) robe and a hat and it was like really really Um, a big deal to open the scroll and to make the scroll and to preserve the scroll and to read the scroll 
um, in an in an age where literacy and education, like learning how to read, was not was not easy. Um, so there was a sense that the very act of reading or taking in the information or spreading the information had a holiness to to it, an infinity to to it. Whereas now you can just so quickly boom tap. Scroll, 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 tap, like, boom, just in two seconds, you're connected to the world and you're just going through things, um, which then just makes it all feel arbitrary or it doesn't have the same ceremony. And that gets into the Marshall, okay. Marshall McLuhan yeah. and the medium is the message. And what is the medium of the scroll? What does the scroll itself tell you about the information on it? Exactly. Very different from what the phone tells you. Um, yes. Yes. I mean, the other thing, the other message is that the phone makes it feel like the world is in your pocket. Like the world is in your pocket. The whole world is there at any point. Mm -hmm. A scroll is like the world is way bigger than you, buddy. Uh, you know, the scroll <laughs> is way bigger than you. Uh, you know, who do you think you are? <laughs> you I know. just have this scene of like the scroll holder. He's just like whacking someone over the head with the scroll. Yeah. He's like, who I'm do you sorry, think you are, buddy? <laughs> you know, getting, getting hit by it. But this it, is not advice or anything. No, if you if you listen to this podcast for advice of what to do with a scroll, you are in a neat market. Uh, so a yeah, very very neat market. Um, but for you, we dedicate this episode, Mister Neat Guy. Uh, for yeah. more by OG Rose, please visit ogrose dot com. Anchor to listen to the reflection on scrolling. One day, one of platforms will be a scroll. Yeah, that would be really great. We'll just transcribe we'll this like whole. Give us particular we'll get Haven city. a great. We'll get a great town. Do it. We'll give them. They want to paint to all this, the time. Yeah, to this come cave here. In a town and they'll be the we'll scroll. unroll it. It will be you know like the Dead Sea Scrolls, but yes. hopefully it's not dead because nobody wanted to hear it. Hopefully it's just the title because of its location. Uh, but That's why it's uh, called Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, Somebody did get. Yeah, they got beat on by it. Guys, thanks know. for thanks for, for tuning listening. In. We appreciate it. OG Rose.